Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to spend a little bit of time working on the future value function in Excel. One of my students was asking me about future value when you already have an account. So we can play around with that because there's an argument in the FV function which allows for some initial account value. So let's get to work here. Now I've set up a place for initial account value, rate of return, years, monthly investment, future value. We'll put in a couple other rows too, but I'm going to start off assuming my initial account value is zero. Uh, rate of return, I'm going to plug in 11%, and that's already in a percentage format. For number of years, I'm going to say, let's go 25 years into the future. Monthly investment is going to be 350, and then I'm going to calculate the future value. So the basic future value calculation is equals FV. First parameter is the rate. I'm going to click on the cell that contains my rate of return. I'm going to divide that by 12 so I get monthly rate of return. This is going to be a monthly compounding investment because I'm making monthly investments. Comma, number of periods is my second argument. And the number of periods is going to be the number of years, my time horizon, and I'm going to multiply that by 12 to get the number of months going forward. Comma, and then the PMT argument, that's going to be a negative version of my monthly investment. It's a cash outflow. We want to express that as a negative. The money we receive in the future, that's going to be an inflow. That'll be a positive. Comma. Now, I'm going to use an optional parameter here, which is present value. That's my initial account. Again, that's going to be a minus sign. And then I'm going to click on the cell that contains my initial account value. Comma. Now the type, you can have a couple of things in here. It can be a zero or a one. Now zero is the default, and that means basically you're doing your investments at the end of the period. So for instance, if I'm investing every month, it's pretending we're investing at the end of the month. Now if I have a one in there, that means I'm investing at the beginning of the month. So the first of every month as opposed to the, 30, the 30th of every month. What's the big deal? Well, it actually does, over a long period of time, have an impact because for each monthly investment, you're getting an extra month of compounding. I'm going to leave it at the default, which means I could leave it empty, but I'll manually put in the zero so that we can see easily what the difference is later on. Closing parentheses. So now I've got all five arguments or parameters for the future value function. My rate, which is my annual rate of return divided by 12, the number of payment periods, in this case, the number of years times 12 to get the number of months, negative version of my monthly investment, and then the optional parameters, a negative version of my initial account value, and then type zero, meaning I'm investing at the end of the payment period, the end of the month in this example. Press enter, and there we go. So basically what this calculator is telling me is that if I've got 25 years of investing, 350 bucks a month at an 11% annual average annual return, at the end of that time period, I will have about 550 grand. What was the total investment? Well, that's gonna be equal to the monthly investment times the number of years times 12, number of monthly investments. And um, I think I will yeah, it's not truly accurate, but um, I'll go ahead and add in my initial account value, even though that probably has investment growth as well. Okay, 105,000. Let's go ahead and uh, let's style all of these the same. There we go. And which means my gain or investment returns is going to be equal to my future value minus my total investment. Okay, sounds pretty good. Uh, let's see, where are we getting some of these parameters from? Well, rate of return, 11%. I, uh, a little bit earlier, I calculated a bunch of uh, annual returns for the S&P 500 over the past 50 years, and the average return for the last 50 years was 11, actually last 51 years, was 11.12%. Also looked at some rolling averages, and if you're really... Um, looking to save for, let's say, nine or more years or invest for nine or more years, uh, stock market seems to be pretty good. Out of 43 nine-year periods, only one of those 43 nine-year periods was a negative. 
all the others were positive. So as you might say, well, as long as you're keeping your investment in that stock market or in that mutual fund for nine or more years, you have a really good chance based on historical returns of not losing your money, of making some money. So that's where I'm getting that 11% return on here. Now for initial account value, let's start playing with that. What if my initial account value was something like 50 grand? Obviously, if you're starting with 50,000 instead of starting with zero, it has a tremendous impact on that future value amount. Let me bold that. Now let's make that other little tweak I was talking about before. My formula right now assumes that I'm making my investments at the end of the payment period, at the end of each month. If I change that last parameter from zero to one, now it assumes I'll be making it at the beginning of the month. Hold on a moment. Let me press escape because I gotta make a mental note of this number. It's about 1.32 million. I'm gonna change that zero to a one and press enter. And there we go. Actually, it's about the same. So now I'm 1.329. What was it before? If I go back to zero. 1.324. So obviously it does have an impact when I uh, invest at the beginning of the month as opposed to the end of the month because we're getting a little bit more compounding over that month. Not a big impact, but still a little bit of an impact. So I'll keep it that at default there. So thanks for hanging out with me. That's the future value function using all five arguments, all five parameters, including the initial account value and the type investing at the end of the month versus the beginning of the month. Thanks for hanging out with me.